Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to share with you that how can you change a pivot table field calculation or a column calculation with a slicer. Before I show you what the solution that I have built, I want to take you through the data and explain to you what the problem is and then probably take you through the solution. So let's say we have this data go over here and we have the sales data where the first column is transaction ID. We have the date, we have the region. ID, product ID, units, channel, affiliate code, and the interval, seasonal, off-seasonal. And on this data, I'd like to perform several calculations. For example, I'd like to calculate my total sales or the, the units sold or the commission paid or the number of transactions. Now, all of these are four different calculations, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to build a slicer where I can choose between one of these four calculations and then my pivot table automatically updates. So to build these four calculations, I'll maybe have to take a sum of units for calculating total units. I'll have to take a look at the count of transactions for counting the number of transactions, maybe do a VLOOKUP and multiply the units with the price, which is there in my products table. You can see that we have a price here common column between the two tables is the product code. So I'll have to do a VLOOKUP to get the price, multiply the price with the units and then get my total sales. And wherever the sales have been made by an affiliate, I'll then have to pay a commission as well. So these are four separate calculations involving four different columns. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to build a slicer where I can pick and choose from which calculation do I want to see in my pivot. And that calculation shows up in my pivot. So let's just take a look at the solution. Then I'll tell you how did I build it in the first place. So let's just take a look at the pivot. So we have a very regular pivot table here. This is made out of power pivot. The first column is the year. The next column is the month. And then we have the commission being calculated because in the slicer, I have picked up the commission. Now, if I do change that to total sales, I'll get total sales. I'll get the transactions, which is the count of the transactions and then the units sold. So all these all of these four are different calculations and I'm picking up the calculation on a different column using a slicer. All right, probably I've got your interest now and I'm going to share with you that how did I build that in Power Pivot. All right, quick uh, sneak peek at the data once again. So we have four tables here. The first one is our sales table. The second one is the products table. And the common column between the two tables is the product code. And then we have the calendar table for doing any time calculations. Although we are not doing it, but I just built one calendar table. And then we have a disconnected table, which is just a mention of the four calculations. This is nothing complicated. I've just written a headline, which is calculate what and the header and then four texts underneath that. So total sales commission units sold and the transactions and we load all of these four tables into power pivot so let's just take a look at how power pivot looks like this is how the relationships look like so the calendar and the products are our lookup tables the sales is the transactions table and then we have a disconnected table which is calculate what from this table from this column the slicer has been made and let's just come over to the pivot to take a look at the measures so once I kind of load the data, I write four measures, right? Load the data and build the relationships. I write four measures. These four measures are to calculate total sales. And this is nothing but a simple measure where I'm doing a VLOOKUP and getting the price, multiplying that with the units in every single row of the sales and then eventually summing it up. And then similarly, I have commission, I have the total units, and then I have the transactions. After I build these four calculations, then I need to be able to select uh, the calculation that is chosen by the user. And then I need to build a selection mechanism for which I have built the slicer. And the slicer is built on this, this, this table, which is what table, which is not linked to anything. This is on purpose, a disconnected table. So on this column, I build a slicer and you can see that there is a slicer here. And then the user picks up that what does he wants to see. Now, then I build a small measure if you just take a look at this measure, it's really, really simple. All that I'm saying is that if the number of rows in the in the calculate what column is equal to one, um, then just give me the same value. So if I have picked up commission, just give me commission because there is just one row as per the filter context in the calculate what column. But let's say, for example, if the user actually picks up two things here, so he picks up commission or he picks up total sales, then both cannot be showed here. In that case, we display a message which says select a single value. So it's a really simple calculation here, just checking the number of rows first. Are there one or more than one? In case there is a, just a one single row, 
I just pick up the name of the calculation, which is either this, 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 or this. Otherwise, we just give a message, select a single calculations. Once I build this simple check, then we actually build a calculation. That means what calculation has to run. So let's just take a look at that. So I'm using a switch function here and I'm saying if at all the switch returns are true, then I'd like to run the selection calculation. So if the selection is equal to total sales, uh, then run the sales calculation. If the selection is equal to commission, selection is the, the measure that we just created here, which tells us what has been selected here. So yeah, if selection is equal to total sales, I run the sales. If selection is equal to commission, I pick up the commission measure. If selection is equal to unit sold, I pick up the unit sold measure. If selection is equal to transactions, I pick up the transactions measure. Remember that we created these four measures to begin with, total sales, commission, units, and transactions. These have been used right here. So you can see that these four measures are used right here. And in case none of them are true, then just give us the message that pick up a single calculation. So this is a small calculation that I've built. And then in the pivot table across year and the month, rather than dropping any of these four measures, I drop the calculation here because the calculation is then linked to my slicer. The slicer is then linked to either picking up the four calculations. So let's just take a look. So when I click on total sales, um, this value goes in the selection and the selection becomes equal to the word total sales and then the calculation runs the total sales calculation and so it happens for all four of them. Now whenever you have a dense you know dashboard where you want to show something in the single pivot table multiple calculation this is going to be extremely helpful for you. All right the same thing can be achieved in Power BI as well so let's just take a look at that. All right, here's my Power BI screen, and you can see that uh, I have the same Cal year, Cal month, and the calculation right here, and the same thing has been done right here with the slicer. Now, instead of writing two measures, I just wrote one single measure. I mean, I already have these measures actually. So I have total sales, I have commission, units, and the transactions, and then I've built a single uh, measure called calculation. Let's just take a look at what this measure is. So all that I'm saying is the same thing. If the count rows is not equal to one, then give me this message, otherwise the single value. And then I declare four variables as to what is the selected value. Uh, and then I build the same switch function right here. So this is actually doing the same thing, but the variables make it easier to write all of that in the single measure. So you can take a look at that and that's how I have built this measure. All right, I hope you like this. Let me know if you have any questions around this, if you need help with anything. If you haven't understood anything, I'll be more than happy to help you out. If you have any comments, please feel free to post them uh, underneath the video or on the blog. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for watching this and you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.